morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, a great beer friends and lovers of freedom. This is Radio Biafra House of Service coming to you through Radio Biafra London. My name remains Marzi Jonathan Chinidu from Alo Province of Biafra Land. We are here live and direct. Today is the third day of December 2023. Tata Therefore, without taking any time, the long awaited time has come, I will hand over the platform to the head of the Directorate of Taste of the Indigenous People of Biafra, Maaz Chika Odizim, in order to address Biafrans and lovers of freedom that are listening from all over the world. Maaz, you are welcome. The platform is yours. Marzi, can you hear me, please? Marzi, 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 Chike, can you hear me, please? Yes. Yes. Please. yes. please, the platform is yours. Please go on. The whole world is listening. Thank you, Mazi Jonathan. Good evening, great Biafrans. Good afternoon, good morning, and good night to all of you, depending on your time zone this very evening. And good evening as well to the friends and the supporters of the indigenous people of Biafra worldwide. My name is Mazuchi Kedozim, and I come from Ihe Oma. Ihe Oma is in all the province of Biafra land. By the grace of Chukwuki Kabi Amapromihenine, I serve the indigenous people of Biafra as the head of directorate of state. I know that it's been a while that I address the Biafran people. It is a strategic plan by the leadership and uh, it is the reason is bringing as we had hoped the positive results that we envisaged but today tonight it is very imperative and very important that I address the Biafran people and of course address the world community. But before I go on, let me from the deepest part of my heart commend these great wonderful family, the IPOB worldwide family. I want to commend you exceedingly because you have shown that the freedom of the Pope Biafra is a project that we cannot retreat or surrender from. You have exhibited irrespective of the challenges that we have faced you have exhibited a very very serious commitment dedication to this very cause and our cause as we all know is a just cause the demand of the Biafran people for a referendum so that they can decide and determine their fate as a people 
as beer friends. I want to not only commend you tonight, two years and almost six months, that the Supreme Leader of the Indigenous People of Biafra was kidnapped in Kenya, tortured, tortured almost to death, and then extraordinarily renditioned to the zoo called Nigeria. Two years and six months. The enemy had thought that without the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra being around, that it will be a walkover for them to destroy this very movement. But I am delighted to tell the wonderful Biafran family, the wonderful IPOB family worldwide, that because of you, wherever you may be tonight, whether in the Grand Zero homeland of Biafra or in the diaspora, it is because of you that we have not been and cannot be destroyed by the enemy, the Nigerian establishment, and the, the, those who align with them, whether within us or in the international community. Today, or well, this month as well, this month makes it the third year that Onye Numazin and the set up the Eastern Security Network. A network of dedicated hardcore Biafran people who have given their life for the protection of our, whole, of our homeland. As we celebrate this third anniversary, I want to call on all of you to continue on the part of supporting DSN. The result of their presence in our land cannot be quantified. I, the words, I lack words to actually describe the effect of their presence in our land. I was today watching um, one, one uh, program, well, not a program, but uh, um, a video, a video of a woman. When you see the, the, the vibe, the freshness of the tomatoes that she and her husband probably were able to harvest in Biafra land, in Enugu, it simply, it simply, that, that very video simply um, makes a lie the narrative that Biafra land cannot produce and Biafra people cannot produce what they can eat. If you can remember, Biafrans, um, in one of my last um, address to, to the Biafra people, I, I stressed on the need for us to go back to the land. Go back to the land, that is go back to farming. Because our land is a blessed land. Our land, there is nothing you put in the land of Biafra as um, a farming seed or, or root without it coming up, germinating, and then producing great produce. That, that this woman and people like her, many, many people, many other people like her have been able to go to the farm, that they have had the peace to be able to cultivate their farms without, without uh, we seeing on the social media um, people who were 
killed, disemboweled, cut into pieces, and you know, telling us what can he do. This was what Mazen and the Colonel saw. And we knew, we knew where we were going actually. That was why the setting up of ESN was very imperative. ESN, for those who do not know, was set up to safeguard the land, the farmland, the forests of Biafrans or Biafra land against marauding terrorist headsmen. That is why ESN was set up. And they have done an exceedingly good work at that job that they we are given to do in Biafra land. And I can say I say again with 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 all pride that that is the reason why people could now go to their farms, cultivate their farmlands, and at the time of harvest, they will go and harvest the fruit of their labor. Taking this into account, I am calling on all of you tonight, dear friends, the sympathizers to the Biafran cause, the supporters and friends of Biafran, that for our own existence, that so that the Biafran people, we do not depend on what is imported from another part of the zoo down to our land. Because one of the main reasons, I, I bet that people will, should be should be um, kind of patient tonight because this this broadcast is, is is not the usual kind of broadcast. One of the reasons why marauding terrorist headsmen were sent into our land was that by the time they have finished what they were they were sent to do nobody will go to farm in our land and then we will be dependent upon the food stuff that will be sent down from maybe from the north or from the west or from any other place and if you leave and i, I can remember as well saying that the Ensuring that Biafra land is um, sustains itself food-wise is a national security issue for us. And I gave an example at that time that most of these European countries, you see, they, they support their farmers. They subsidize them. And because they know that a nation can never depend on an outsider or any other side, for that matter, for what they eat and what they consume. The enemy wanted us to depend on them for what we eat, so that at the snap of a finger, they can do to us what they did to our fathers in 1960, 66 to 1970. They will starve us to death. But this generation thanks to Chukwa Biyama and of course the the ancestors of Biafrans. We already know what their plans were. And of course we will we decided that we will not make that mistake that was made in the in the sixties. Why am I telling you all this? Why I'm telling you all this is that for all of you even those who do not understand, who may even have a, a, any disagreement with the Biafran cause, if you are an if you are Biafran, if you are an evil person, if you are an Ibibio man, Afik man, um, Ijo man, just name it, you will understand that. 
the setting up of ESN if they had not been set up when they were set up in 2020. By now, by now, your land will have been overrun. These men, they sleep in the forest, no comfort, no bed and no no ple no no comfort of, of, of whatever whatever measure. They sleep in the forest to ensure that that women and men and, and our mothers and elderly they go to their farms and cultivate their farmlands and then harvest it at the appropriate time. They must be supported. They must, the ESN must be supported because the work that is before us is enormous and we have sworn an oath that for us it is Biafra or nothing. On this third anniversary of the Eastern Security Network, there should be and there shall not be any anyone saying I'm I'm tired of supporting. He cannot be tired of supporting because we have not gotten to the destination that we have set out to get to, which is an independent free and sovereign Biafra nation. To our international friends, when the zoo tell you that we have um, militia or whatever they will call their name, um, terrorizing, uh, attacking their, their, their security, security um, forces and the rest of it, it's a lie. ESN was not sent or, or was not set up to um, engage the Nigerian military or their security apparatus. No, ESN was set up primarily to ensure that the jihadists, that the Fulani headsmen, the terrorists masquerading as headsmen who were sent in their numbers, in their numbers into our, into our, into our territory, to stop our people from going to their farms. That was why ESN was set up. And I can tell you tonight that these men and women, these men and women who have abandoned their families and whatever, any, whatever comfort that exists in the zoo, sacrificing and dedicating their life for the benefit of their people. Sacrifice. That is the fundamental, one of the fundamental principles of IPOB. Because even apart from the ESN, the IPOB family is a voluntary family. Every support that we have received from IPOB family, these are voluntary support. Those of you who are on the sideline, the time to support these young men and women to protect your land is now. There shall no longer be any prevarication or let me see what will happen. Now is the time to support them. From ESN, I move on to the continued detention of that man who set up the Instant Security Network, the Supreme Leader of Indigenous People of Biafra and the Americano, two years and six months. And also, I want our international friends to pay attention tonight. Two years and six months. I'm just talking about now the time he was kidnapped, kidnapped. Nigeria kidnapped him in collaboration with the British MI6 and committing an international crime, tortured him almost to death. As we know, one the, the, the 
effect or the result of that torture they gave to him in 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 Kenya was that he has continued to have very very health issues with his with one of his ears. They 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 almost they almost wanted to make him no no not, not to hear anymore. Now. Mazin Nandikano has been continuously, continuously and constantly harassed, detained, maligned by the Nigerian system since 2015. To, to 2015, now counted up to 2023. How many years is that? Eight years, one man has become the zoo have nothing else to do other than to harass this man wherever they they, 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 they they may find him what is his crime i'm asking the international community what and of course our friends listen what is the crime of Martin Nandika? Martin Nandikano said that self-determination of his people is a right. It is not a word that he coined by himself. It is a not. It is not um, something that he formulated by himself. This is an internationally accepted, recognized, and enshrined, guaranteed right to indigenous people of Biafra. Is the is indigenous people of Biafra, I'm asking this question now, maybe it's rhetorical, but I'm asking it, people must listen. Is the indigenous people of Biafra, or are they, are they different from the what the UN and AU charters dealing on the rights of the indigenous people of Biafra? Are the indigenous people of Biafra not envisaged to be entitled to those rights are we different that for these long notwithstanding the genocide that that was committed on our people 1966 to 1970 going back the program that were part of it notwithstanding this horrendous horrendous barbaric inhuman act that our people suffered at the hand of Nigeria, the international community, they have remained unconcerned. I am laying a foundation for what is to come so that tomorrow nobody will say they did not know. And please, Marzi Jonathan, this broadcast, after tonight, it must be circulated so that Because 2024 will be a different ball game. It will be a completely, completely different ball game. Since the international community has has left us to our own fate, since they have they have we have we have written, we have We've visited many of these organizations. Our case will always be pushed under the table. And cases that do not measure in, 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 in horrific nature to what happened to us will be magnified. They have left us to our fate. So the, the background I'm laying tonight is that 2024 maybe will be different, very, very different. So that nobody will say, IPOB, you have come again, or you have started again, or where is this, where is this all coming from? Of your land, you have no independence as in true word of the world, independent. There is nothing like independence in the zoo. 
Now, Mazin Namdikano has been in detention for the past two and a half years. Irrespective of the fact, the courts have set this man free. The courts, the appeal court of the zoo had said this man has no case to answer. He, he was discharged and acquitted. Acquitted. In law, that means he, was, he had no case to answer. But the Nigerian government, no, they have they are not they are not happy with with one of their sons under the boss because he had the temerity to marry a woman that is not Caucasian, that has African blood in her. That is why the young man they, they call Prince Harry suffering because he has a black woman as a, as a, as as, a, as as his spouse now these people can imagine what they are doing to their own son I, I want our people to be to not to be emotional about these things we have to be very very reasonable you know in law we say when you make a law or a judgment the judges will ask how will a reasonable man on the street think about this particular law or this particular situation? Emotions is okay, or emotions are okay, sure. But don't don't throw away your common sense. Don't throw away that very common sense that you can nobody can 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 give it to you. That is why the law says, what can a reasonable man think of a particular situation when he comes when you present such a situation to him what do you make of this situation you a reasonable you a reasonable person on the street that if the if the british government didn't find it in fact if they they um they thought it necessary to throw their own prince under the bus for that for this this very reason, imagine Mazenam Khan who is coming to challenge the status quo, who is saying that Biafra must be free so that the stealing of our resources by, by Britain must stop. This very part of my broadcast is addressed to the international community, to our friends and supporters in the international world. And when the here tomorrow that we have closed all channels of communication with nigeria no more negotiation and every other thing that comes with it they must not ask us why are we doing this we have we have for the past 50 years been requesting for an opportunity for the biafran people as human beings that we are we are not less human beings than any other person whether Caucasian or Asian or white or black or green or red. The Biafran people, we have the same right as every other person. The British people, I was reading the other day, the new president of, of, um, of Argentina, when he was making part of his campaign, um, election campaign he made the return of Falkland Island to the to the to the uh, to the Argentines as part of his agenda the British came up and said that the the Falkland people have right to self-determination are you guys listening Falkland they have a right to self-determination and that by that right of self-determination they have done a referendum to remain outside of Argentina. What about the Biafran people? Do we not have that right of self-determination? And that was why I was asking the question, if, whether, the envis what was envisaged by the United Nations Charter on the rights of the indigenous people, whether it did not envisage that the Biafran people will also have the same equal right. But let's assume that the United Nations Charter does not does not envisage that Biafran people will exercise such right. What about the African Union? African Union that also has the right 
the, the charter dealing with the rights of indigenous people. African Union, I'm talking about now, no longer the United Nations, African Union that covers the whole of Africa. Are they also telling us that we as Biafrans, even though we're African, we are not entitled to the rights that is contained in that charter for the rights of the indigenous people. This has been our case for the past 12, 13 years. Not, I mean, I'm talking about IPOB now. But for the past 50 years, this has been our case. We have peacefully, we have, con we have presented this matter in any manner that um, people can peaceably present a matter. But we have been told to go to hell. We have been told to go to hell. Dear friends, the question is, are you willing to go to hell? Now, put the, 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 the incarceration of Mazina and Kano on one side. And now look at what is going on in Lagos State. In Lagos State. The um i i'm i'm searching for the right word but the ethnic profiling that has become the agenda of the federal government of the zoo headed by tunibu and the state governor of lagos state called sangu olu the et Ethnic profiling. If you go and look at the destruction of the properties that are um, that that they are carrying out in Lagos State, you will see. You will. It's not. They, this these places are not. Um, um, what do they call it again? It's not like Morocco, where where you have slums. These are not slums. These are houses mansions mansions that many of them can never ever dream of ever building in their life but these mansions are not even 20 years mansions these are very very new mansions that young Igbos, young biafrans have toiled day and night made the money in their businesses and build a home for themselves these are the properties that the Lagos state government are destroying the wife of tinubu i, I can't remember the year but i think the the video is, is still online where she was jubilating a woman <laughs> my goodness me she was actually saying that they will take over the property of of the property of the Ibus. you want to take over a property that you did not build you want to take over a property of of somebody that is not related to you, is not connected to you but you just want to take it over what kind of wickedness is that what kind of inhumanity is that what kind of envy and jealousy is that again the government of Lagos State will tell you these houses were built without the proper um, documentation okay for argument's sake let's even assume they were not they were built without the proper uh, documentation what about the markets the markets of these Igbo people the markets that they are maybe 90 percent in popular uh, um in in uh, uh 90 percent in 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 in, in may height in the germans will say I, i'm looking for the english word <laughs> they are 90 percent more than any other person they have they have the majority these markets they have destroyed them and redestroyed them and set many of them ablaze many have been set ablaze and these young men these evil people will still you know um go back 
clean up the 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 the, the bond the debris clean up the debris and rebuild after some years they will go again and then set it ablaze again i'm asking now if you say that the houses are built are not they are not built with proper documentation what about the markets why do you want to destroy and it is not only that there are no other markets that has majority of other nations in Lagos State. The houses, they have the house, house, house market where they, they bring the, the, their produce from, from the north. Have you set it ablaze? And these places are, are touches. We go there, you see. They have never destroyed them, but they have continually, they have continually, they have continuously embarked upon this hatred and when people talk they will say uh, uh, how did they describe it uh, hate speech what how can you describe hate speech when you are deliberately ethnic profiling a nation of people and destroying their properties their way of life their their uh, um, means of livelihood what else can be more hateful than this very act I am telling the Yoruba people, <laughs> um, you see, don't make us go back to 1970. This Mazen Namnikano that Tinubu is holding now, he was the one. He was the one who called Biafran and said, stop the antagonization with the Yoruba people. Even if they, they antagonize, we leave them. And we listened because we know he has the reason why he, he's, he's giving us that instruction, that order. He even set up a forum where some of the Yoruba people, I was in one of those forums. He, he, I wasn't there. I was there. Where we could be interacting in order to make sure that there is constant communication between these two nations. Now, Tinibu has found himself, uh, in whichever way he did, it's none of my business. But he has found himself in the saddle of, 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 of um, governance. What concerns him and his wife? And Sanwo Olu that he put in place is to destroy evil people's property. Why I am saying this is that the Yoruba must, <laughs> as when, uh, our people say that when one finger, you know, dips its itself in an oil, it will it will affect the rest of it. This hatred, I said, don't let us think back. Because the agenda of people of the West, the Yoruba people, has always been to see how they can economically emasculate the Biafran people. But you can't do that. You, you, know, the, you people do not have what it takes to do that. Irrespective of your jealousy and whatever, you cannot stop the Biafran people from becoming what? Their destiny has said they will become. What you what what you will only achieve doing is to create an enmity between the two nations that will last hundreds of years, if not a thousand years. That is why I'm calling and asking the Yoruba people to call their people, their sons, to order. Sangwolu must be called to order, and Tinibu must be called to order. They must cease from destroying the properties of Igbos in Lagos State. I want to tell you something. Why is what is the problem that you see that you you for you uh, Igbos are conglomerating in one area and making it an area that belongs to the Igbo? Why are, did they steal the land? Those lands they bought, they paid them, they paid the required fees before they could even you know, um, put one block on that land. Who collected those money? Apart from the money that the, old, the those, the community that have the land will collect. The Lagos state government collected part of these monies 
for whatever they could because they have so many uh, agencies once you want to do uh, um, build a house they will call and tell you, do you have permission if you say you don't have permission then you must get the permission so why i'm saying this is that the people that have land in lagos state they have the proper permission they have the proper document the government is aware that this this land is about to be has been bought is about to be constructed upon is about to be developed but no they want to eat their cake and have they will collect the money from the evil people let them construct their house after constructing these these mansions these beautiful houses you have no humanity new you carry one useless uh, backer or what they call a um, bulldozer one bulldozer something that somebody suffered for years in a twinkling of an eye you go down and you bring it down and you call yourself a government you 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 will pat yourself on the back that you have done well the yoruba must listen tonight the destruction of evil property must cease must stop in lagos state what they are doing when they finish in lagos the other cities and other states will take a coup from them and then it will be the story repeating itself i am so so touched but i don't want to be angry because anger is a negative energy it will it will be cloud our sense of reason but i am touched when i see these houses where how they are being destroyed they do not only destroy the houses that these people have been they go to where they make the money where they suffer day and night in the morning those of us who who spend some time in lagos before we 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 you know left that that those place that, that area you see these young men it's 5 a.m they have woken up five in the morning six in the morning they are woken up they are going to their shops they will be there until the evening toiling and when they have finished all this toil and then they will come and you know try to build a house to have some rest of mind you will be envious of that that toil that they have put into building that house and you go and use one backer one one bulldozer and destroy it i ask myself again where is the humanity of these people that call themselves uh this man that calls himself uh, uh Sanwolu and tunibo where is your humanity are you humans at all when you see this do you sleep well I am not summonizing here tonight. I am laying a foundation for the world to know and for them to understand that it is enough for us. Enough. Enough for us. For the fact that those who are supposed to speak for us are not speaking to are not speaking for us does not mean that we cannot stand and speak for ourselves. This brings me to the Hanes and Ibo and the World Ibo Congress, two very useless organizations that I have ever seen in my life. Two very, very useless organizations. You call yourself Hanes and Ibo. What are you Hanes and? What in Ibo are you? Are you? Are you Hanes and? And you, you, you say you are what? What in Ibo are you congressing? That your son has been in detention in my goodness me two and a half years you have not what it takes to bring him out how can you come and stand and say you are the leaders of Wahanes and Nibo and that you are what Ibo Congress protecting the interest of Ndibo how can you do that the properties of your people are being destroyed in Lagos State you are there those in in, in uh, World Ibo Congress they are refraps idiots I, in fact they are idiots they are only there to welcome one useless governor and hoping that they will be given um appointment in the in in in, in, the, in the zoo in the government that is all they, they they know what to do they do they they have not no they do not have the metal actually they they do not want to even see Martin and Kano come out i cried 
for the Igbo nation. I cry for the Igbo nation that no one can stand anymore. Ohanes and Igbo is, is a bunch of men that do not know what, in fact, they do not know the history that brought Ohanes and Igbo to be. I'll tell them tonight. They do not know. They do not know because the present one, uh, Emmanuel Iwayang, is the person hobnobbing with the, with, with the, with the vampire in Imo State. Who appointed Iwayang as Ohanes and Igbo president? Hopeless those of them, man. The Supreme Court government, the Supreme Court administrator in Imo State. The murderer. The person who was given the contract to come and kill his people. He's the one who uh, who, who appointed Emmanuel uh, Nwaya to be honest, the president. And that is why they have no interest in Martin Nand Kano because uh, the, 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 the vampire, the, own, the, the blood sucker, the blood sucker that is that is that is in him, that is in at inside the council house have no interest. He have no interest in Martin Nand can coming out. He have no interest in in speaking for the for the Igbos in Lagos whose lives have been destroyed, whose means of livelihood are being destroyed, whose homes are being destroyed. He cannot speak. It's not part of the agenda that they, they gave to him. Now, listen, Ohanes and Nibo, I'll tell you, because before Ohanes and Nibo become what it has become today, it has, there was a history. It started with Lagos Igbo Union. Lagos Igbo Union, in the same Lagos, this same Lagos, this same Lagos that the Lagos people, uh, the Sangwolu wasn't born at that time. He wasn't born. Tinibu himself, I don't know if he was born, 1930. Lagos Igbo Union, Excuse me, I draw a tax order. Lagos Igbo Union was established as far back as 1930. And of course, it's not only that they set it up at that time to welcome a worthy son who was returning after finishing his sojourn abroad, Dr. Akanibia. After the that that process, the Lagos Igbo Union metamorphosed, metam metamorphosed into the Igbo Federation Union when they began to include other parts of um, Igbo's in the heartland of Igbo to become, you know, because if you if if you want to span that union, then the name change became necessary and it became Evo Federation Union. From the Evo Federation Union in 1948, the most powerful of all of them was, was born, the Igbo State Union. The Igbo State Union was birthed in listing very well, not in Enugu, not in nowhere. Not in uh, in uh, Abia or in Aba or Omaha. The Igbo state unions were birthed in Igwe Ocha of all places. Igwe Ocha in 1948. When people begin to talk nonsense about Igwe Ocha or whatever, I laugh at them. They don't know their history. But that is for another day. Now, the Igbo State Union was so powerful at that time that it became a threat. Not, in fact, a threat to the to the then colonial master, because this is where you have the what we what, what the Igbo call unity of purpose. They were set up with my uh, Doctor Nam as his first president. 
But the major reason they were stopped is to ensure that the interests of the bulls, wherever they may be found, is protected. After Azikiwe, another very, very worthy son of Igbo land, Chief JCOB, took over as the president when Azikiwe became much interested in the Nigerian in, in the Nigerian project. And when I said the most powerful of them all, at the time Igbo Union was set up, when Igbo speak, oh my goodness, then they have spoken at that time. And the British did not like that. When the program began in the North, the program of Ndi Igbo began in the North in 1966, um, respected Igbo sons came together to form what is called the Igbo National Assembly. The Igbo Union, Igbo State Union was banned, more or less. But after the war, or it became redundant, after the war, bef before the war began in 1966 they transformed the former Igbo state union to become the Igbo national assembly this was also banned by the military at that time because they were threatened <laughs> they were threatened for the simple reason because they feared that it will pro promote Igbo separatism they should not be afraid anymore because well we are not pursuing Igbo separatism but that thing they want to prevent will be eventually come to be and it must come to pass the biafra restoration is a project that must be and it must come to pass so their fear was actually very very um uh, it, it doesn't make any sense because uh, if you had let those people be yeah, probably things would have been different but that's by the way now Igbo National Assembly was set up uh, was bound by the military because they, they feared and that fear as they believe uh, they, they want that is for, the, for them the Igbo Forum was the precursor or the predecessor to this present Ohanes and Igbo I hope you people are, are putting this down because you need this history to understand how Ohanes and Igbo have become become in fact useless more than useless more than useless from the moment the men of what joined our ancestors Ohanes and Igbo became a tool in the hands of the zoological people of Nigeria to do as he pleased. The Igbo Forum, as I said, was a predecessor of the present Okanese that we know. However, this Igbo Forum, before it became Okanese, the Igbo, it had men of integrity as leaders whose singular motivation whose singular driving force is the defense and protection of Igbo, Igbo interests, Igbo people, and Igbo land. When I talk about Igbo here, I'm using Igbo in, in generic form as it encompasses every part of the former eastern region of the zoological Republic of Nigeria. You have people, respected men, as the leaders of these forums, like Dr. Kanibia. You have Professor Ben Wabers. You have Dr. Michael Ihe Onukara, popularly called M.I. Obara. You have the, the, the best of all the poets you can ever think about, Dr. Payos Okibo. You have Chief Jerome Udoji. You have Chief Dennis Osadebe. These men, these men had the interest of their people, and when they speak, they maintain their stand. When they come out to speak on behalf of their people, it does not matter. It is the interest of their people that comes at the forefront. And that is how it has to be. Because the world politics is run on interest. America cannot defend your interests and, and jeopardizing their own interests, <laughs> as well as Britain. 
So, why did Ohanese now become the sissy that they have become? Because when Igbo Forum was in place, even M.I. Opara, who was the then um, premier of the Eastern region, he was a member of the Igbo Forum, and he will take all that from the person who is in charge of the Igbo Forum. He's not there to go there and give them all that. He's just an ordinary member when he comes to the Igbo Forum. When he goes to the government, of course he's in charge. But these men that call themselves men who now hide under the, the wrapper of their wives and, and allow their children, governors to dictate to them if the, if the interests of the governors are not protected, then they will not, the Johannes and Nibu cannot, in fact, they can and they will do nothing. They will do nothing. That is the reason even when Onyendu asked us to give these elders an opportunity, to, to give them benefit of that, we gave them two years and six months. We have given you the opportunity, but you have been very, very um, deceptive to yourself. In fact, uh, you've been lying to yourself. Let me put it that way. You've been lying to yourself. Thinking that you're lying to the Biafra, you don't know. We know all this. We we are we've been watching you, and we have said 2024 will be a different ball game altogether. It will be a different ball game. Biafrans all over the world, when you have listened to this, ask yourself without emotions again, as a reasonable man. What is the way forward? As a reasonable man, how can Ohanese come out tomorrow and say that they are Ohanese and Dibu? They want to protect Dibu's interest in where? Can you believe them? World Book Congress are there in Lagos. Onyandu went to World Book Congress when the before the ESM was even for. He went to them. He told them what is coming. They laughed at him. They tell this you this small boy. Why? What are you? Do you want to uh, bring war? The war is on their first on their doorstep. They don't come home to Igbo land because they have all run away. Is it not shameful? Shame to all of them. But the youths, we say, if our elders have refused to to do what is needful, the youths will take the bull by the horn. IPOB was set up as a peaceful movement. We have remained peaceful. The zoo government of Nigeria have continued to instigate crime in our land, terror in our land, kidnappings through their, through their military uh, terrorists, terrorists in army uniform and, and military uniform and police uniform and every other security apparatus in Nigeria. They are all in, in Biafra land. They are all in Igbo land. They are all in our cities and our villages and towns. What are they there? What are they looking for there? When, when Boko Haram is in, why are they always, why are they in our land? They are there with the hope that they will finish up what their four beards started. Those who were part of the massacre of Biafrans, of the genocide against Biafrans, two of them are still remaining. Abbasanjo and uh, what, what is his name again? Gowan. These are they are they played major role in this. Obasanjo's hand is rippling in the blood of of, of Biafrans. Oh, uh, Gowan's hand is dripping in blood of and I don't know the Amaram plan. I, sorry if I if I move into it. I don't know the plan to cook it out for them. But my prayer is that they will live one two more years and see what this generation will do to the zoo. One, two more years, they should leave and see what we will do to them. And to those 
who call themselves our elders that are that are the 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 the, the worst set of elders that one can ever wish for himself. Those these people I don't know. I ask this question. What is the way forward? And IPOB do not do anything without having a plan of the way forward. First of all, this is December. Our people will be moving in their numbers down to their to our villages and towns and cities in Biafra land. And you will notice those in Biafra land noticed the international community listening again. Friends and supporters of Biafra, please pay attention. The military, the police, the custom, the the e e e f c c the um what do you call them the uh, um those who are at the borders immigration and the rest of them they all have um roadblocks in biafra land you'll be asking yourself what well, is that a joke it's not a joke this is the truth go a, 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 a maybe a kilometer apart if you don't see the army you see the police if you don't see the police, you see the uh, road safety. If you don't see the road safety, you see EFCC. If you don't see road safety, uh, EFCC, you see uh, uh, the immigration and and the national defense. What did they call it? Um, civil defense and the rest of it. You see all one kilometer apart. What are they doing there? Extortion, extortion, extortion of the highest order. Inter society wrote. A report some sometime last year. These people are extorting on a regular basis, on a daily basis, billions of dollars. I'm not talking about naira. Naira is a worthless toilet paper. Toilet paper that we that we buy here is, is even more wo wo has more worth than naira. These people extort billions of dollars from our people. Those who are genuinely, genuinely going about their normal businesses, the transporters, they will, they will, uh, they will. You will pass. You will. Oh my goodness! In one road, if you are traveling from Onitsha to Were, and you will see that you will be paying your toll gate to these these separate uh, roadblocks that the zoo have set up there. Are you telling me that the army chief of staff does not know that this that his boys are on the road harassing our people, extorting our people? Are you telling me that the inspector, of, inspector general of police does not know that his people are on the road in Biafra land extorting and harassing and killing our people? Are you telling me that the other security agencies do not know? If they do not know that these people are there, then they are illegal. If they are illegal, we will deal with them as illegal roadblocks. But if they are not illegal, the Inspector General of Police and the Chief of Army Staff must withdraw these men on our roadblock so that our people who are coming home must come home and enjoy their Christmas without any form of intimidation, harassment, in any manner. People whose houses are being destroyed in Lagos. The Inspector General of Police is a Yoruba man. The army chief is probably a Yoruba man. You people are destroying their houses in Lagos. They are, they are means of living in Lagos. They want to come home to see if they can, they can, for a moment, for a moment, have some peace. And you will extort them from Lagos until they enter their, fa their father's compound. The inspector general of police. The army chief of staff, the customs, the EFCC, whatever you call yourself, please, tonight, the, the, the 3rd of December 2023, if you do not, if you are not listening to this very program, people should send it to you. They must send it to you because you will not say, you will not say that you did not hear our complaint. We have complained to the international community. We have cried. 
We have buried our dead. We have, you know, treated our wounded. Nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. And I'm telling you, they must remove these roadblocks from our streets, from our villages, from our towns, from our roads. If they do not, we IPOB will not be held responsible when our ancestors rise up and take step. I am warning them now. In fact, I'm giving them expo. They must remove them so that our people must come home and do some soul searching and ask themselves a very hard question. Furthermore, Um Ohanez and since you have proved yourself unworthy of the people, you have proved yourself a nuisance, as I would say, honestly, I'm I'm so so disappointed. <laughs> so so I Wordible Congress. In fact, World Congress. around claiming to be something when you are nothing. You have made yourself redundant. You have made yourself completely, completely redundant and ineffective and um, incapable of protecting the Igbo nation, the Igbo people, their, their well-being, their properties, and their, and, and their means of living. You have proved incapable of doing that. Therefore, the Biafran people we will look another way. Do you know how to deal with the zoo? We know how to deal with the zoo. That one they bound the Igbo National Assembly, it will be resuscitated but with a different name. Ndi Igbo National Assembly will be set up to replace the 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 moribund redundant organizing people and those who will be the 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 foundation of this national assembly will be those whose interest of Ndibu is topmost in the agenda again i am asking biafrans wherever you may be in the zoo or in the diaspora all of us must go back home go back home for this very christmas time i'm not saying just go back and stay because that time is coming go back home for this very christmas period why you must go back is that we are about to do something that has never been done before. In fact, it is there, but nobody is willing to actually identify it. It is there. We haven't taken it as serious as, as we have to take it. So you all, every one of us must go home and the communities, each community must gather and make sure that amongst them, the oldest amongst each community must be identified. And this oldest, of course, we you, you have the first oldest, the second, second to the oldest, third to the oldest. You have to identify this old, you know, the old um, uh, the old people in each community. They have a job to be to do, but that will come. This will be the community level that we have been practicing and it has been working for us. We are going back to the community level. And those who will who will not take this this very serious, you will be actually let make your community to be behind when the time comes. Because we are not we are no longer in fact we are impatient to move ahead ahead. So, 
and that is why I am asking. That is the reason for. Be, that is the reason I said that the army chief and the police chief and the other chiefs of all the security must remove their people, their people from our roads, so that our people can freely come home, enjoy their peace, and then if they want to travel back, they travel back. But meanwhile, when they come, each community must sit together and identify the oldest amongst them. The oldest amongst you who will be given responsibility at the appropriate time. The channel of communication will be there. The Igbo, the Igbo National Assembly will be set up. It will and must be set up. Ohaneze has disappointed more than disappointment can be made. And we cannot continue to do the same thing even though it is bringing out failure and failure and failure. It is time to take our destiny into our own hands and this IPOB that the Union of has set in, has, has set in place, has put in place, has set up, we are ready to do that. Again, many of you may remember that after the war, um, <laughs> I'll still call it here UNN, you know, because they haven't changed their name yet, but they will change, the name change will come. The University of Nigeria and Suka was a center of excellence when it comes to learning. You know, those who went there, if you go to UNN then, apart from the same jealousy of comparison, UNN was a center of excellence. We had men we had men, um, um, I can't remember Professor, Professor D.K., yes, yeah, Professor D.K., the, 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 one of the first, first uh, uh, VCs of, 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 United, of, of uh, UNN, you know. Um, these were men who, when they were there, I think Abel and the rest of them, they also did well. But I don't know how... UNN is, I'll be honest to you, I don't know how they are at the moment, but they have a responsibility also as well in our march, in the way forward to the realization of our dream. The UNN has a part to play. Remember, after the war, after the war, the what the zoo did was to, um, they said that uh, we had a research and development unit at UNN which was used to manufacture whatever we the Biafrans used to uh, you know prosecute the war. <laughs> they, 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 are you people listening? They they simply they did not harness that that intellect that those people who who were able to to do the unthinkable with the least, with the little they had. No, Nigerian government did not say, okay, the war is over, come, help Nigeria to, you know, replicate that thing you replicated in Biafra. It was not the agenda. The agenda was Igbo must be brought down. That is the, what is, um, the, the, the what what they think about each time they go to to bed is how will we bring Ibo down? Not how are we going to make Nigeria to grow? That is the politicians in the zoo. That is the that is the uh, the system in the zoo. That is the structure in the zoo. That is what the British have lent them to do. Have taught them to do. The the University of Nigeria and Suka then yes. If they had a research and uh, research and, and development unit that helps Biafra to produce what you know Western nations we are producing, what stops you from saying, okay, come on, let's build in, in a, 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 let's build together, you know, use your 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 whatever you know how to 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 build and and develop, you know, to make uh, this country a good one for everybody. No. They closed down the chemical engineering faculty. They closed down the research and development institute. If you want to go, the, the chemical engineering, I don't think they are offering anything at UNL at the moment. They are not. Why? 
a university of that repute, of that caliber, they are afraid. They, they are afraid that the, the university will produce um, uh, another, another uh, you know, Ubunigwe <laughs> uh, for the Biafran people. Don't worry about that. The zoo must not worry about this. Therefore, the part that UN must play is that the research and development institute must be resuscitated. I know they have a research and development institute that deals on help, helps and, and medicine. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a research and development, how you research on help. Oh, that is important. I'm not, I'm not belittling it. It's important. But development of Biafra, a nation can never develop if you do not produce anything. It cannot, Onyendu calls it a rentier economy. That is what they are running. You cannot pull us down forever. It cannot happen and it will not happen. And why I'm saying is that those in charge of UN must take note. If they do not listen, if they are not listening tonight, somebody must make this audio, uh, this broadcast available to them. They have a responsibility in the bear from people taking their destiny into their hand. They have a, respons a responsibility in us moving forward. Therefore, these two, these two units, the Faculty of Chemical Engineering must be re must be opened. If it never was there, it must be opened. And the Research and Development Institute must be reinstituted. We refuse. We refuse to be held down anymore by the zoo. If they're interested in running their, their Nigeria the, the way they want it, I can't begrudge them. Why should I begrudge them? But I am being very frank to you tonight, the 3rd of December, that the Biafran people have had enough. The international community must listen tonight. We have had enough and we say enough is enough and not the first assignment that we are going to carry out and UNN must be part of this assignment that is why I said the research and development issue must be put in place if UNN let me make this very clear if the Imana we say that um, uh, the, the first born son if if you say your bet right there are younger ones waiting and ready to take that bet right one of the main reasons why our land and our people are running to lagos taking their businesses to lagos is because we do not have a functional seaport in biafra land those again the friends of Biafra must listen. We have One <coughs> in Igocha. We have Wari Seaport. We have one uh, seaport in, uh, in uh, well, not we have. There is seaport in, there is One Seaport. There is Wari Seaport. There is another seaport in Calabar. There is another seaport in uh, Aquaibum. Do you know, friends, in the international community and those listening to us, do you know that these four seaports in in the southeast in Biafran territory, none of them is open to the public for use. It was, I think, one or two of them are in the private hands, private hands. My goodness me, private hands, and they will now force our people, those who are doing their business in Aba doing their business in our nature, in Newe and have all the all the places, you will import your raw materials, those manufacturing, or your goods, and you will, you know, um, ship it into a papa or a papa in Lagos. The same Lagos, they are destroying our property. The same Lagos, they are destroying our market. The same Lagos, they will, peep, our people will now you know import your goods in lagos and from lagos 
a journey to the east that will take you all things being equal between i don't know how many kilometers but let's say four to five hours or at the most six hours journey from lagos to to the marketplace where that person who imported that goods is has his store or his shop or his you know store there will be checkpoints 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 custom as i mentioned in our land again custom uh, army police uh, drug enforcement um name it name it all of them your container must be paid apart this this payment that this container will be or this importers will be paying is nothing is is different from the real government toll gate because there are some toll gates as well in, in those areas but you will pay the toll gate but these military these uh, security agencies you have to drop with your container if you don't drop you cannot pass. They will even um, they may even take your seize your container and take it to the uh, to the custom custom uh, custom uh, office. And then before you know it, they have auctioned it. Auctioned it to who? To a Hausa man, to Yoruba man. My dear friends of Biafra, my dear supporters of Biafra, my dear international community. Which nation? Which people can continue to live in this manner for the rest of their life? being honest being very honest i ask you which people which nation can can accommodate what the Igbos, what the biafrans have accommodated in nigeria despite the the, the horrendous treatment we had hoped that nigeria would be a place for everyone to live and develop at their pace that time has come and gone that time has come and gone now as i was saying these you know um um containers will be by the time they reach the market on it or area the market about or only we market or whatever whichever you have maybe spent maybe 50 percent of the cost another extra cost 50 percent extra cost of what you have already spent to clear these goods and these you have to add before you can sell these goods making these things exorbitant extraordinary exorbitant to our people are we going to continue in that form are, are you are, is anybody actually advising me to continue to sit down and watch and then allow this this generation this race to be destroyed economically, culturally, politically, and what have you. If you can allow your nation, your people, to go through what we are going through and then allow itself to be destroyed, we say we will not allow our people to go through what we have gone through again. And we will not allow the nation or the race that makes up the Biafran territory to be destroyed. We cannot, and we will not. Coming to the issue of the seaport, that is the first project we are going to embark upon. Can you know? It reminds me of this Ambakwe men that had the interest of Ibo in their heart, and these are these are these 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 like like the uh, Okibo them Okibo who who was the finest of the poets. Okibo left his comfort and went into the bush during the war. How many of these these idiots that call themselves Hanes and Iban World Book Congress can, can leave the comfort of their place and, and, and do what people like Okibo did? And they cannot measure him half of his repute as a poet. Or is it um, um, uh, uh, M.I.O. that they can compare to? No, they cannot. Now, Ndibo, you are listening to me very carefully. This is the project of the year. This is going to be our first community project because this is the first real, the first 
airport in Imo. The Imo airport that we talk about today was community project. My father contributed. Many, many people contributed. And therefore, we built it. That is what we are known for. It, it pains me that people are envying our resourcefulness, our desire to develop our land. People are envious of that. Where does that happen? We are not asking, we are not asking, okay, we, people have already said, the government of the zoo have refused to allow competition. Is competition not interesting with democracy? Competition is part of democracy. You have in Lekki, second seaport in Lekki, why the East have none? And if you tell me it is Lagos state government that is building it, fine, I'm fine with that. The Biafran people will build our own seaport. Let me see, and I'm saying it that the zoo will hear me, and that the international community will also listen. We are not going to ask for permission. Not in this world, not tomorrow, not ever. For this very project to be built, we will not ask any permission and we will confront it. The state it will be built upon, we will, we know, we know the areas where we have tributaries that, that are putted uh, or are booted into the ocean. We know. We will do our homework and, and, um, how will I put it now? Anyway, we will do our homework. And the state that we have chosen that will serve the interests of the people of Biafra the most will be chosen. So that, let's see, let's even encourage this, this competition that is part of democracy. It is part of, let's say, courage. Don't, don't, people, be, People must not tell, because tomorrow now, they will say, IPOB, you have come again. You cannot, after seeing what we have gone through, and what, I, I, live, I live in Switzerland. These people, when they plan something, it may take them five years to plan it. It may take them three years to plan it. It may take them two years to plan, depending